Today, we're gonna to be discussing why the Canon 70D is an absolute game changer in the world of photography and videography. This is the first camera out of all of Canon's cameras ever to include dual pixel autofocus, and that revolutionized the autofocus game, especially in video, but we'll get to it in photo as well. We're gonna be taking a look at how dual pixel autofocus actually works and comparing it to some of the previous ways that we used to do autofocus in cameras. So to start off, this camera came out in 2013, more than 10 years ago. This was released as an upgrade to the predecessor, the Canon 60D, which had no autofocus in video. It was pretty much not continuous autofocus. You had to half press the shutter button. So everyone was super impressed. Everyone loved this thing and praised it for its camcorder-like autofocus. It wasn't just videographers which loved it though, photographers loved it too because you had great live view autofocus as well, whereas previous cameras relied on contrast-based autofocus. We'll get to all the technical stuff of how all of that works, but dual pixel autofocus was a major, major upgrade. All right, so let's talk about how traditional autofocus works and we'll compare it to dual pixel autofocus. So I've got a trusty little Sharpie here. Now you have your lens over here. Light comes and travels through that lens. We have a mirror and another mirror here at the top. The light travels up like this and out like that to the viewfinder. I'll just draw a little eye. There we go, that's the viewfinder. Now here we have the image sensor. Now I added some dots up here for the sake of this video, we're gonna call that the focus plane. There's a term for it, but we'll keep it simple. Now, the distance between the focus plane and the mirror is the same exact distance as the mirror to the sensor. That means if we're grabbing focus at this point here, then anything when the mirror is flipped up and the light reflects to the sensor will be in focus because it's the same exact distance. Now on this focus plane here, I'll draw another diagram. You have tiny little focus points. Now you probably have more focus points than this when you look through your viewfinder, but we're gonna keep things simple in this video. Now there's also different kinds of autofocus points. There's cross type autofocus points, there's regular autofocus points. We're not gonna dig into that because it gets pretty complicated. Um, we'll just keep things nice and simple here. What these points are, are phase detect autofocus points. Now what that means is there's two images which it captures. Now it's not actually images, but again, we're gonna keep things simple. It layers these two images on top of each other and sees if they're aligned. If they're slightly misaligned with each other, then that means the image is not in focus. If they're perfectly aligned with each other, that means the image is in focus. So when it sees that the image is in perfect focus on one of these points, and you take the picture, the mirror here flips up, and because it's the same distance here as it is to the sensor, the image is gonna be in perfect focus, and there you go, you have an image which is, well, in perfect focus. Now the issue here is you have a very limited number of these phase detect points, and your sensor is covered by a mirror. For video, the sensor needs to constantly be exposed, and that means it's flipped up covering that autofocus plane, so there's no autofocus. Now companies in the past use different methods for autofocus, such as contrast-based autofocus, which kind of works the way that it sounds. It looks for contrast in your image, and if it sees that that contrast is kind of fuzzy between white and black, then it just moves and kind of guesses until it aligns and it's not fuzzy anymore. That way of autofocus isn't that great, phase detect is a whole lot more reliable. So this is where dual pixel autofocus comes in. Canon was like, what if we take these phase detect points, we use a technology just like that, but do it on the sensor instead of on this focus plane. So let me draw a diagram for dual pixel autofocus. Now on the Canon 70D, you still have the light traveling through the lens. You still have a mirror here. Oh, that's not a nice line still reflects up to another mirror, which then goes to the viewfinder. You still do actually have this autofocus plane over here, which is just used strictly for photo. And then of course you still have your sensor here and the light travels and hits your sensor. Now the thing is, for video or live view, this mirror flips up. 
In that case, the light is traveling through the lens and directly hitting the sensor. Now on the sensor, let me draw out the sensor here. You have pixels basically going from top to bottom across the entire, entire, entire image sensor. That's essentially what makes up the image sensor are these pixels. Now, every single one of these pixels, if we zoom in super, super, super close, let's pretend this is the pixel it has two photodiodes. Now, a traditional sensor has one photodiode. This one has two. Now, why would you need two photodiodes to capture light if it's all going just to one pixel? What if every single pixel was one of these phase detect autofocus points? So every single pixel on the sensor compares the two images from the two photodiodes and sees if they line up with each other. If they do, that means it's in focus. If they don't, that means it's not in focus. Explained very broadly. Okay, now yes, this is great, but you may say there's cameras like the NEX systems from Sony, which included a similar technology, two photodiodes per pixel, and they were face detect points. Now the difference is those sensors had only between five to 10% of those pixels as face detect points. Canon, on the other hand, had at least 80% or more of its sensor covered in these phase detect points. That means if it's 80% of the Canon 70D's sensor, that's 16.16 million phase detect points. Now, you really don't count focus points in this way. You wouldn't say that like, oh yeah, I've got 16 million focus points which I can select from. No, that's, that's not true. You do have 16 million pixels I'm not sure if this Canon 70D has like 80% of the sensor covered in pixels or more, but let's just stick with 80% for simplicity. That doesn't mean you have that many selectable autofocus points like you do in your viewfinder here. It's just that that many pixels are doing calculations and are being used in the camera to predict autofocus and basically comparing the two images for you versus what you had before. Now you can't select those, but what you have is now much better ability for tracking because as the subject is moving, it's moving through these pixels to a different area and continuing the tracking of the autofocus. Whereas here, if the subject is over here, well, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> They're not going to be in focus because there's no focus points there. Yes, this is game changing for photo because something like this will never happen. You'll always have someone in focus no matter where they are in the image, but it's game-changing for the camera industry as a whole. Now we've moved away from DSLR cameras. Cameras now don't have mirrors, they're mirrorless cameras. That means Canon paved the path, Canon showed that it was possible to get amazing autofocus even without the need for a mirror. This camera had a mirror, but its autofocus was so good that it didn't need to. Back in the day, if you shot live view, even with just the previous version of this camera, the Canon 60D, you had to expect that the autofocus would be way worse than if you were using it in its regular mode, not live view mode, and just had the autofocus system going through the viewfinder. Now, if Canon was able to make the autofocus that good, people felt more comfortable to move towards something like mirrorless because they saw it was possible to get good autofocus without the need for that reflection, without the need for a mirror. Now, on a more broad scale, People loved this camera and praised it to be game-changing for video. People said that it had camcorder-like autofocus, and that's true. Cameras before this time, especially DSLR cameras, wouldn't have very good autofocus in video, or they just simply wouldn't autofocus in video. This camera, you would simply point it at anything, you would vlog with it, and the focus would change completely seamlessly and automatically, continuously no need to half press the button, no need to do anything, so it was game changing for that too. Now if you're shooting sports, this was game changing for that too, because now pretend instead of this being just a person, that's a soccer player, and you're trying to capture them as they're playing during a match. If the soccer player is running across from here to here, and they're at the bottom of your frame, this is the only autofocus point they're gonna hit. If you're shooting burst in live view mode, 
well, there's pixels across the whole sensor. There's pixels down here. Excuse my terrible drawing ability. This is why I do photography, not art. As they run across the frame down here, there's pixels which are covering the whole sensor. Dual pixel autofocus pixels. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And the camera is constantly calculating autofocus, even though they would traditionally not be touching an autofocus point. Not only that, you could take burst photos, and as you're taking the pictures, it's still making calculations on autofocus points, detects where the person is, and it knows how to adjust the camera. Now, how did the Canon 70D stack up to competitors from Nikon and Sony? Sony was a lot closer as they were using technology like this, but Nikon, Nikon didn't have anything like that just yet. But again, Canon had the whole sensor covered in these dual pixel autofocus points. Competitors didn't have quite as much of the sensor covered. Should you consider buying the Canon 70D today? I actually made a whole video about this. Check it out up here. As a long story short, yes, you should buy this camera. I bought this camera this year used and yeah, it's, it serves me great. I absolutely love it and I totally recommend you to purchase this camera. Even if you're watching this video years into the future, if this camera is good now and people are satisfied with the results, it's not gonna start taking worse pictures, worse video into the future. It's gonna stay the same and it does an amazing job. So if it does an amazing job now, it's gonna do an amazing job then. Now, everything I talked about sounds extremely game-changing with this camera, but let's look a little bit into the future. Canon started experimenting with mirrorless cameras. You got the Canon EOS R, and now, fast forward to today, we've got the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. I think they're, they're working on a Mark III. We'll see, that, that would be really cool. Anyways, you may ask yourself, what autofocus system are those cameras using? Those cameras are mirrorless. It's going straight from the lens to the sensor without any of this madness going on. What do they do for autofocus? Dual pixel autofocus introduced with this camera and basically the exact same technology was moved forward to all of those cameras. Yes, there's newer versions with faster calculations, etc., etc., but it's this technology which is in those cameras even today. That is why this camera is an absolute trailblazer. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video. Hopefully now you have a bit of a better understanding of how dual pixel autofocus works, maybe traditional autofocus, and I'll see you guys next time. If you enjoy this kind of content, consider checking out some of my other videos, maybe subscribing, maybe hitting that bell. Peace.